The troll gas platform was built to withstand the huge stresses generated by 100-foot waves and gale force winds. But it faces another kind of stress that could be equally devastating. Something as simple as a musical note threatens potential catastrophe. It all starts with every structural engineer's nightmare. The collapse of the mighty Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the USA. Four months after it opened, stunned onlookers saw the rigid steel and concrete twisting like rubber. As the edges rose and fell up to 28 feet, a confident project engineer strode onto the bridge believing it was still safe. But the twisting got more and more violent. Remarkably, the structure survived the extreme stresses for almost an hour before they became overwhelming. Amazingly, the only fatality was a dog. The problem was caused by a phenomenon called resonance. The trolleys engineers faced an equally dangerous threat. When it's subjected to the wrong kind of stresses, even super strong concrete can fall apart. And because it's located out here in the hostile North Sea, the trolley platform is vulnerable to a particular kind of stress that's repeated over and over again, waves. Over 70 years, the platform could be hit by more than 180 million waves. I've done the math. But it's not the size of the waves that could spell disaster. It's their rhythm. I've discovered the troll is a kind of huge musical instrument which makes it peculiarly vulnerable to repeated stresses, like lapping waves. I'm here with sound engineer Jonathan Hargreaves to find out Troll's hidden danger. All physical structures have a particular note they like to resonate at, that they will ring at. With the wine glass, that's particularly audible. And if I just ping it, the vibration of the glass vibrates the air, which we hear as sound. All objects have these notes. Yes, they have the notes. Some are more audible than others. So even the troll has its own note, a frequency at which it resonates. Scientists calculate that frequency by counting the number of vibrations per second. The glass vibrates nearly 500 times a second. And this frequency is its fatal flaw. So that ping yeah. is important, because that's... That's a constant note. Yeah, it's a physical property of the actual object. How does that help us with breaking it? What we're going to do is we're going to turn the process by which we hear the note backwards. So instead of the structure vibrating and we hear the note, we can actually put a vibration through the air, and that will make the structure vibrate in sympathy. If you produce exactly the right note with the guitar that matches the note of the glass, then the glass will resonate. That means if you replay the exact same note that the glass produces, you can make it vibrate in sympathy without even touching it. It's called resonance. Eventually, the glass will vibrate so much that it will shatter. So it really is as simple as that. This has a note. It's a frequency at which it likes to vibrate. If we reverse the process, if we send the same vibrations back to it, yeah. it'll just vibrate in sympathy with yeah. us yes. until it gets carried away and breaks. So we need to match this to that. Exactly. So they're both singing the same note. Exactly right. It sounds spookily simple, I don't believe it. To produce the lethal note for the glass, we tune the guitar to the exact same note the glass itself produced. Slow motion footage shows the glass wobbling like jello 
until it can take the resonance no longer. Now, as far as we know, that's never been done with a guitar before, but the principle is exactly the same as the cartoon soprano opera singer and the glass breaking. The point now is, what's the connection between that and Troll A? If Jonathan is right, resonance could be a lethal threat even to a structure as big as Troll. Its 1,000 foot legs are like huge guitar strings. Certain sequences of waves could set them vibrating along their entire length. And just like a glass, if they resonate too much at a critical frequency, they could be shaken to bits. More than half a century after the collapse of the Tacoma Bridge, Troll's engineers took the problem very seriously. I heard it from the boss himself, Jan Huger. Talk to me then about this problem of resonance. Is it just you're sitting here waiting for a monster 200 foot wave? I mean, what is it? The problem was uh, not the largest waves. It was uh, if you have the waves in a certain height and a certain direction and a certain frequency, you could put some forces on the platform that it could easily break. It's like a swing. If you have the right period uh, and the right force and the right frequency, you can make it swing and vibrate. It isn't the biggest wave then. It's it's the time in the interval. And the direction, yes, that's right. How bad could it be? How big a problem is it? In worst case, it could collapse uh, the whole construction. That would send the $16 billion trolley to the bottom of the sea. The engineers learned their lesson from the Tacoma Bridge. Troll's engineers had to stop the structure from resonating at the critical frequency generated by a sequence of waves. Back in the music studio, Jonathan shows me how to take the resonant frequency out of the danger zone. So this principle of changing the frequency is pretty easy to understand, because if you play a note on a guitar, that's on the string, and then on the same string, if you put your finger on it, it changes the note. Yes, what you've done is you've changed the length of the string that's vibrating, and by doing that, you've changed what note it wants to resonate at, and instead of hearing a low tone, we hear a high tone. So you've changed the frequency? Yeah. And how can we apply that, then, to the glass? Well, we can do exactly the same thing with the glass. So if you just hit it, just tap it, yeah, that was the resonant note. If yeah. I just damp that, and you do it again... It's changed it completely. Yeah. Can we see if it will actually stop it breaking? So if we set it up exactly as we did it before, if I play the note of the glass on the guitar... It's worth a go. It's worth a shot. The troll engineers use the exact same principle without the pencil. They retuned the platform by shortening the length of the legs that could vibrate. Their version of the pencil was a huge lump of concrete. Halfway up the legs, they fitted a special brace to stiffen the structure. It was just like holding down a guitar string further up the neck to get a higher note. Now, Troll's legs vibrate at a higher frequency. Waves can't hit the legs at a fast enough tempo to trigger fatal resonance. And as for the Tacoma Bridge, ten years after its unfortunate collapse, engineers built a replacement with a modified design using stiffening struts, nicknamed Sturdy Gertie. In memory of its unfortunate predecessor, it's still standing.